So I'm sure I don't need to convince any of you that a large bird hitting a plane is something we'd like to discourage. With an adult body mass of around 6 kgs, black swans are large birds. We do not want them hitting our planes. Across New Zealand, black swan populations have been declining in recent years. However, in the Manukau Harbour around the Auckland airport, their populations are actually increasing, reaching over 3,000 birds at peak times. Because of their large size and their flocking behaviour, strikes from black swans are extremely costly and risky. Because of this, the airport manages the population using a number of lethal and non-lethal methods. For my research, I'm focusing on one of the non-lethal methods that the airport uses to control the movement and the location of swans through disturbance. To do this, the airport take out a pretty cool looking jet ski known as a projet to chase the birds out of high risk areas close to the runway. Despite costing over $70,000 just to buy, there has been no formal assist assessment of how effective this method is at reducing the risks of bird strike. This of course is where my research comes in. So for my masters, we're using GPS tracking technology to look at how these chases affect the movement and the behaviour of black swans at the Auckland airport. To do this, we're going to be looking at a number of different proxies for bird strike risk and compare them before and after an intervention occurs. For example, we can look at where the birds spend most of their time and when they're most likely to cross the runway. We can do this by creating heat maps like the one shown on the screen from raw GPS data. These heat maps will show us heat hotspots of movement activity that can be compared before and after an intervention occurs. This can show us where the spawns move to after a chase and whether they're more likely to cross the runway during these chases, which of course will be bad for bird strike risk. We can then look at how far the birds are displaced during these chases and how long it takes them to return to these high-risk sites. From this data, we can inform managers on how often they should do chases so they can reduce the amount of time the birds actually spend in these high-risk areas. Finally, we can look at how birds allocate their time into different behaviours, such as feeding or flying or resting. From the, we can do this using some modelling techniques and the models will be able to show us how these chases actually affect the behaviour of the swans and when high-risk activities such as flying are likely to occur. This research has the potential to provide a framework for assessing and improving the management of species, not just at airports, but any number of sensitive sites where eradication is not an option. A good example of this might be the Kia, which although a nuisance in some areas, we obviously don't want to go around killing them all. So we can use these disturbance techniques to reduce the impacts that these birds have while still keeping them around. Finally, of course, this research will provide best practice guidelines for the management of black swans around the Auckland airport which has the potential to save money, time, and even lives.